I'm going to dice with death and, and lift it up. There's nothing much more I can say about it. I'm fascinated by the, by the glaze, which is in all these sort of swirly bits like that. I don't quite know how that was put on. It's a classical design, isn't it? I'd have put it in the second half of the 18th century, more than the first. Uh, but beyond that, there's nothing much more that I can say about it. All right, well, it says Wedgwood and Bentley. Point is, is it? And the date, second half, according to Humphrey, earlier, according to Joyce. Arthur? Well, Wedgwood and Bentley, I think it's the third half of the 18th century. Um, I'll just have a peep. Yes, that's nice. Um, curious, this vase, because there it is. Um, it's hardly what you call an agate ware, because of all these greens in it, but it's certainly a marbled sort of uh, vase, or clay, or whatever it is. Um, you ask how these were done. These are oxides of metal, just twiddled about and, and made, and then uh, that's the answer. But what interests me is this, this name, Wedgwood and Bentley. Now, Bentley, so I understand, was the man who first made this stuff at the bottom, that black stuff, <laughs> black basalt. And uh, this was a, a time when you, you've seen those black basalt cream jugs and all that, nothing to them at all but the shape dead black. So th this was the age when they began to shell, sell shapes to people. And look at that. I don't know the date of that, but I should think it must be around about Robert Adam. This must be around about 1770, something like that. But the mark in itself, Wedgwood and Bentley, I give the, the opposition a tip. If it's marked Wedgwood, it's worth so much money. If it's marked Wedgwood and Bentley, it's worth a lot more money. This would be one of a pair, or one of a garniture of three. Why more for Wedgwood and Bentley, Arthur? Because that's later than Wedgwood, um, isn't it? Yes, but um, there's so few bits that are marked Wedgwood and Bentley. There's masses of it marked Wedgwood, but so, uh, you know, he made these oval medallions. When they're marked Wedgwood and Bentley, they're so much nicer than when they're just Wedgwood. Well, that's an interesting tip. Roger. Uh, originally, all the white swagging has been gilt, a great deal of it is now missing, but Arthur, I think I'm right in saying that quite a lot of pottery of this date you find, uh, of good shape, uh, sometimes with raised decoration, was originally gilt, and the gilding has yeah. washed off. Yes, and that has too. Uh, as it has to a very considerable extent, but I can still see gleams of it here. Presumably meant to represent Ormolu, isn't it? That, that, that is right. Mm. And well, you can, there again, you see the butt in, you can, you can nearly see Blue John vases with ormolu mounts. Here they are again, if you change the... It's almost a green John. Oh. <laughs> isn't it? Yes, indeed. It, it, it is to... one vase, isn't it? Uh, no, it is one vase. Yes. And, uh, let us, anyway, make it a pair for fun. It is one vase. Make it a pair. And um, it's uh, 1775, so Arthur's third half <laughs> is just about right. The beginning of the last quarter. And the Wedgwood and Bentley period, 1768 to 80. So, it's uh, the first go here of Joyce, as a pair, Joyce, therefore worth more than double. Yes. Uh, well, I would think about in the region of 1,500 pounds. 1,500 pounds, Joyce bids. Now then, Humphrey, can you draw level? It's five she's up at the moment. Um, I'll go a shade higher than that and say 2,000. Should have been lower, it's 850. Because uh, this is, after all, um, not quite in the class of that tip staff that we saw. So it's five, uh, sorry, it's 10 to five, in fact, uh, now that Joyce Blair leads. So Humphrey will have to get one on the nail next time to draw level if possible, but it's not next time now. It's time for Arthur's piece of furniture he brings us each week. Always a delightful piece, and I think you're going to find this equally so. As I'm sure you will, if you like chairs, because this too, the ordinary outline of this, a heppel white armchair ordinary shield back armchair with nice pretty shapey arms on square taper legs and little spade feet. That's not the point about this chair. The point about this chair is the quality. If you could learn to recognize workmanship and quality just like this. Now look at those Prince of Wales plumes. Solid piece of wood, 
they're nearly like ostrich feathers. There they are, they, they can you can feel you can nearly blow them. Tied with a little tiny bit of ribbon tie. You remember that piece of wood has got to stay up and above everything else while they undercut all this and leave that little bit there just to do that. And look at these beads. All these splats were flat. That's being carved out. This bead's not being stuck on. Now watch my finger go down there. Never a tremor, never a waver, just about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch, all the way, just so, down to those lovely medallions just there. The shaped top rail. See, usually there's a flower head at the end. There's a little flower head there. But just look at that tiny little thing, stem, that comes out of there with those little leaves, just to make it just that bit different. And you see, that sort of quality, that sort of carving, um, elevates this chair from the sort of thing that you find reproduced everywhere today, poor quality, modern reproductions. When you get one like this, it just shouts at you. And uh, recently one, something similar to this, one odd chair of that ilk, that quality, made 580 pounds in an auction. Thank you, Arthur, but I think Arthur gave you the warning. There are lots of reproductions, so don't think you've got one of those necessarily in your home. Now let's see with the score 10 to nil in Joyce Bear's favour what happens with the next object is. This 19th century French doll, known as a Parisian doll, is dressed in the clothes of a widow. The swivelling head and the shoulders are made of bisque porcelain. It was made by Jumeau of Paris about 1870. Humphrey has first go at this really out of turn in a sense, I think. Mm. <laughs> That's rather attractive. This is a, a doll on a stand. Pleasant, uh, pleasant face, but the less pleasant uh, extremities, the hand is a bit... Uh, the hand there is not quite so nicely made as the, as the face, which I think is in what China would be. The hand's not in a different material. It looks to me to be slightly, to have the thumb on the wrong side, but still that may be uh, just an idiosyncrasy of the design. Um, Victorian, I would say, um, sort of mi middle of the, well, wait a minute, my, the royal dates are a bit out the spout, but I would say uh, sort of 1850-ish, that sort of time. And made whereabouts, what do you think? Uh, oh, no, I don't know. Let's see if the lady knows. Joyce? Well, of course, it's Victoriana, without a doubt, isn't it? Um, she's got the, the back, I don't know whether you can see, it's all black. This is sort of like black silk and a little black velvet jacket, and she has a brown fur muff in her hand there, uh, with little black beads around her neck, and a dear little, oh look, a little gold cross around her neck, mm. little lace, and she's got sort of pink undies on, I think, and around the back it's quite sweet, I don't know if you can see, she's got two dear little turquoise hat pins. But match your ring, don't they? Yes, they do. But don't... have a quick go yes, at the date I will. and where. The but... date, right. Um, I think this, the, I think it is sort of, could it be German? German and? And about, ooh, um, 1830. 1830. I think yes. Humphrey thought 1880. Now then, what say you, Roger? I think one of the interests with dolls always is when you find them with the original clothing, uh, the way they show the exact style. Uh, th this, I would think, was a doll made about 1860 and is dressed in the costume of about 1875. If we had her away from the stand, she's just got the beginning of a bustle, bustle race coming in. Uh, I question, uh, it, no, this is certainly not the original skirt, but about 1870. Made where? Uh, the uh, face probably, uh, the head made in Germany. She might be French, but it's possibly a German one. Thought to be by Jumeau, actually. A quick word from Arthur? Yes, Jumeau, 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 Jume